All right, people, it's Pratt here, and it is time. It is finally time to do the how to snipe video on World War II or the sniping tips video, whatever you want to call it. I did one on BO3. It did insanely well. Everybody loved it. I always got tweets and comments saying how much it helped them. So I'm hoping this one will do the same. We'll have timestamps in the description to just cover everything. So if you want to skip something or if you want to jump to something, feel free. Please share this around and please as well drop a like on this video right now. It would mean the world to me. I'm going to spend a lot of time putting this together. I've got a lot of footage to go over. got a lot of examples to show and a lot of thought has gone into this to make sure I've covered everything that I possibly can for this video. So, hope you guys do enjoy and here is my how to snipe video on World War II. I need to mention this straight away because it's going to be so hard to describe everything that I want to talk about, all the sniping techniques, all the shot types, all the different class setups. It's going to be so hard to describe all of that if I don't mention this first thing here. So do snipers have aim assist on this game? And I want to say yes and no. The Car 98K and the Springfield on the M1903, I think it's called, they don't have aim assist. On, the, on just the raw snipers themselves, they don't have aim assist. The Lee Enfield and the Carabin, the raw snipers, they have aim assist. But if if you put them on the mountain division they all lose their aim assist if they had it they lose it if they didn't have it they don't have it anymore unless you hold your breath with the mountain division and then you have some slight aim assist so now we got that out of the way let's talk about the shot types that you're going to be using on this game so the main four that you've got on this game are quick scoping drag scoping no scoping and hard scoping so quick scoping is basically way scoping in and as your scope hits the screen, you're going to click shoot. You don't want much time down in the scope. You don't want to like movie scope or anything. Quick scoping or pop shotting is where your scope hits the screen. And as it hits the screen, you click shoot. Next, we have hard scoping, which is basically staying down in your sights for as long as you can or staying down in your scope for as long as you can to make sure you get that one kill. These are like important kills or hard shots to hit. You want to make sure you hard scope just to make sure you get that kill. Next, you've got no scoping, which is basically just what it is. It's no scoping. You're going to hip fire. These are going to be like panic shots, reaction shots. You might be going for a cross map no scope or a trick shot but that's the only time you want to use it is to get something fancy or to hit a reaction shot and the final one i want to mention at the end is drag scoping it's because it's so hard in this game without aim assist to kind of lock onto someone because there's no help there there's no slowing down of the scope if you don't know what aim assist did that's what it does if you see with a regular weapon or a regular gun aim over someone you'll see it slows down like a tiny bit and with sniping that was very helpful on previous games but on the last few it's been very inconsistent of whether it's actually been in the game or not drag scoping on this game is going to be so difficult to nail down every single time so you don't really want to do it that much i still can't drag scope that well it's so hard for me to whip my scope across because there's no nothing slowing it down you have to do all that with your thumb while you're focusing on the kill while you're moving like i mean it's tough so i recommend centering and centering is basically like i said where you get the enemy in the middle of your crosshairs before you're scoping in so as you're scoping you don't have to do much scope work or much movement while you're in scope and you do all of the work outside of your scope that is the best tip i can give right now i'm going to show you examples of what centering is if you don't know what i'm talking about you're thinking what the hell is he even mentioning here centering is this what i'm showing on the screen right now getting the object getting the target get the person in the middle of your crosshairs so when you're scoping in you don't have to do any of the work so i think centering in firing range is the best place you're going to practice for honestly like yeah you're going to do it in games and in pubs and stuff like that but to get the basics down to get the sensitivity you want down go into firing range mess around with it and that's the best tip i can give practice 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 get the sensitivity down i personally use 11 11 on this game it goes all the way up to 14 i think so it's still pretty high. It's very, very high, actually, for no aim assist sniping. I have friends who are really good at sniping who dropped it to, like, 8 or 7. Then I have friends who are really good at sniping. They have it on 14. I don't know how. But for you, for people starting or people who haven't sniped too much, start off low. And if you feel like you're trying to follow someone across the screen while you're trying to center someone and you're way behind them or you're way too fast, if you're way too fast and you can't control where the person is, bring the sensitivity down. If you're following them and you're just not sticking with them, bring it back up. So there's got to be sensitivity that works for you. It's going to be different for everyone. Fast enough to turn around and kill someone to have a fast reaction time, but slow enough so when you're in your scope, you're not over dragging, you're not overcompensating for what you have to do outside of the scope. But basically, in a nutshell, the key to sniping is to use all of those different shot types in different situations. Sometimes you need to quick scope. Sometimes you may have to drag scope. If you're whipping, you shot around the corner. Sometimes you may need to slow it down and hard scope someone. They might be across the map. You might be struggling to hit them. Sometimes you got to do that. And obviously the no scope is there for a quick panic shot but don't focus on one of those focus on them all jump shots and drop shots we're going to get into that as well all these shot types count and on this game on boots of the ground we need to figure out how to outsmart and outplay the opponent without flying in the air so there's obviously different things you can do 
and started off with shot types. So now we've got the basics and the key components out of the way for sniping. Let's go into a little bit more detail about the snipers themselves. There's four snipers on this game. There's the Carabin, there's the Lee Enfield, there's the Car 98K, and then there's a the Springfield. Each of those snipers I just mentioned have a different scoping speed. So some scoping faster than others. Each sniper has their own fire rate, their own scoping speed, their own damage, and their own in-scope sensitivity. So the Carabin is a semi-auto sniper. You're gonna be firing fast, but the damage is pretty low. Wouldn't recommend using that in core. I would recommend using and hardcore and that's the best tip I can give for anybody going for the gold snipers or the diamond snipers use the carabin in hardcore it's just terrible in core. The Liam field is also low damage it's a little bit better than the carabin though so you're gonna get a lot more one shots but it still struggles to get consistent one shots especially when you're firing a little bit lower. The scoping speed and the in scope speed is very slow so you're gonna be scoping in the slowest out of any of the snipers so when you click aim and by the time the scope comes in it's the slowest out of any of the snipers and also while you scoped in that sensitivity is the slowest as well. It's, it's a very slow gun the fire rate is kind of good though the damage is okay but overall it feels sluggish it feels slow but it's a good sniper next up we have the car 98k which i feel is the best sniper in this game it's high fire rate high damage and the fastest scoping speed you can have on this game i know a lot of people might not know how to get this sniper so if you don't you basically have to prestige your mountain division so you have to use a mountain division rank it up all the way to level four i think prestige it and then you get the car 98k and lastly we have the m1903 i'm going to call it the springfield because that's basically what it is slow a fire rate is still decently quick for a bolt action sniper but high damage you're barely going to hit mark anybody with this and it's a pretty fast scoping speed too so i think the order goes the car 98k has the fastest scoping speed then the carabin then the springfield and in last place the lee enfield has the slowest scoping speed i don't know why they did that in this game it drives me crazy because i want to use any sniper at any time and if i use the car 98k which is the fastest scoping speed then i pick up a lee enfield off the floor I'm shooting before my scopes even hit the screen. Those couple of frames, if you're quick scoping, if you're black scoping, those frames count. And it's so hard for me to like adjust and I think it's gonna be the same for you guys. So what I do right now is I use one sniper throughout the day. Throughout that session that I'm going on, I use a Car 98K for all those hours. And then the next day, if I wanna use a Springfield, I stick to that gun because the scoping speed is different. The fire rate is different. Everything is different. It's so hard to adjust. So I briefly mentioned this in the intro just so I could cover what I wanted to mention, but let's go into a little bit more detail. So the mountain division, that is supposedly the main division you want to use when you're sniping. If you don't know what it does, it allows you to hold your breath. You can't do that in any other class. Any other division, you can't hold your breath while you're sniping. So the weird thing about using the mountain division is when you hold your breath, you actually get aim assist on the sniper. It's not there when you regularly use it. If you're just running around sniping, you're not holding your breath at all. Even with the mountain division, you don't have aim assist at all. There's zero. But when you hold your breath and you drag over someone, you have some slight aim assist. Now, I don't think it's that helpful at all because you throw in off every other shot because you don't actually have aim assist unless you hold your breath and the amount of times you hold your breath when you're running around quick scope and stuff like that you don't have enough time to breathe in and get that aim assist you literally have to quick scope and drag scope and whatever and pop shit you gotta be quick now let's say we use airborne or we use infantry or something like that and using all these snipers again the car 98k and the springfield still don't have aim assist whether that's a four time scope whether it's iron sights whatever the carabin and the lee field do have aim assist they have regular aim assist in the game on those specific divisions they don't have it on the mountain one it gets rid of it and you only get it when you hold your breath hopefully i've covered that well i'm sick of talking about that let's move on to something else i think a lot of people might actually ask like how do i manage to like scope in on someone and follow them and be accurate while my scope should sway if you're not using the mountain division and you're not holding your breath you're always going to have some sway i think learning the sway pattern is one way to do it it's going to be something over time that you get better at but i think if you're centering and you're quick scoping a lot and you're not making all of the adjustments in the scope itself and you're making the adjustments out of the scope that is going to be the better way for you to learn how to manage that all the work you're doing while you're scoped in is just a waste of time do all the work outside of the scope get the centering down i can't stress that enough so what's weird about this game in terms of sniping is the shot the bullet always goes straight if you scoped in. You could be falling, you could be running, you could be crouching, you could be whatever. Every time you move and you scope in and you shoot, the bullet is always going straight, which is so weird on this game. It stays straight. It stays perfectly straight, whatever you're doing. So I'm so happy the bullet goes straight when you're jump shotting because it's such a great counter to someone else who's jump shotting or someone who's drop shotting. But I'm really not a fan of even if you just walk in straight and you scoped in while you're walking, that bullet goes straight. That has not been in any card, I don't think. Maybe be 
VO2, but it's just bad. It just looks bad. It's unpredictable. Even though the shot's going straight every time, you're still moving. It's still going to be a hard shot. It's still going to be a challenge. It looks bad in terms of gameplay. Make sure you move, stand still, take your shot on the guy, move again, stand still, take your shot. That is the best way to get rhythm, to get flow, and it's the best way to be consistent. Because you're using a one-shot sniper, yeah, that sounds overpowered, but if you're missing a shot, you're dead. You know, you're dead. So you're going to make sure that when you do get in those gunfights, you do get in those intense situations using every bit of movement, every bit of cover, every bit of angling, if that even makes sense, to make sure that you outplay someone so you can get that shot off. Jump shot and drop shot and peek in, whatever you want, that is the way to do it. So I know a lot of you guys are going to ask how I'm so accurate when I'm jump shotting or when I'm drop shotting on this game. With a regular controller and a regular setup and a regular button layout, I'm going to talk about why that's important in a second. But in a regular playstyle like that, you're taking your thumb off the thumbstick or the analog stick, whatever you want to call it, to press A or X to jump, depending on what platform you're on, to then put your thumb back on the thumbstick to then aim. It's so hard for you to be accurate if you're taking your thumb off to put it back on. First thing what I use and I would recommend, I've been using for like six years, is a scuff controller, which is basically a controller that has paddles on the back. So instead of taking your thumb off the analog stick to press the jump button, you can use a paddle at the back, which you can kind of map to that button or any other button on the controller. So you can always be accurate while you move it around the map. If you want to check them out, the link will be in the description. But if you don't want to use the scuff controller, which you don't have to do, there's two other ways of doing that. I don't want to talk too much about claw because I don't really do it myself. And I know a lot of pro players out there do it. But claw is basically where you use the index finger to press the buttons that you would usually use your thumb for. So you're basically using the side of your finger to press those buttons. So you keep your thumb on the analog stick at all time. If you don't want to change up how you hold the controller, number three is to change your button layout. And I think on this game, it's called like bumper jumper. It basically allows you to use the triggers or the whatever you want to call it, whatever platform you're on, basically using your fingers rather than your thumb to jump around the map and shoot. So keeps your thumb on the analog stick at all times. Those are the three ways right there. You're going to make sure you're always keeping your thumb on the analog stick. So you're always aimed. You're always ready to snap on someone, to follow someone across without having to take it off, to reload, to swap weapon, to jump, to drop shot, whatever it may be. So that kind of brings me on to different plays on this game and how you attack them. So obviously on this game, the meta, like I said, is jump shotting and drop shotting. And it's so hard to counter each of those if you don't know the player, if you don't know the situation, you've got to figure out, all right, these guys jump shot a lot. I've got to aim a little bit higher. So I know if they jump, I'm going to get that one shot kill. Because if they jump and you're aimed, you know, lower body or whatever, you're going to get that hit marker. It's tough. It's very, very tough to counter that in this game. But you've got to read the situation. You've got to read the lobby. Everybody plays different. Every situation, every gunfight is going to be different. You could be playing a team that drop shot a lot. And you'll figure that out in the first few deaths or the first few kills. If they're hitting the floor, you aim a little bit lower so you don't have to pull your shot down as much when they hit that floor. If they're always getting bullets into you first and always flinching you up, they might be pre-aimed a lot. They might be a lot slower in terms of play styles. They could be pre-aimed. They could be waiting for you. If they're always getting the first shot on you, aim a little bit lower. Because if that's the case, they're always going to flinch you up. And if you're aiming a little bit lower and you flinch up, you're getting that high kill. You're getting the high body kill. But if you're already aimed high and you know they're flinching you up, every shot you take is going to be above the head. So you've just got to make sure that each lobby you go into, you know there's different type of players. You know there's someone going to be really aggressive. You got to figure out who that guy is. You know somebody's going to be real passive and just kind of sit back and wait for you to come around. You've got to learn to hit shots on those type of players. Someone plays a head glitch a lot. If someone plays cover a lot, you've got to get into your own cover. You've got to even use jump shotting on that cover so you can outplay that person who's on that head glitch. Because if you're just playing in the middle of the open and they're on a head glitch, it's going to be a tough shot. If someone peaks a lot of shots, if they get you one shot and they rush the kill, if they're rushing you and they're putting the bullets into you and you know they're going to keep chasing you, get around a corner, pre-aim up, they run into the shot, you're good to go. Like, that's the type of stuff you got to figure out while you're playing in-game. You might even feel like being aggressive against someone who's aggressive is the best play. I do that a lot too. I don't always play passive if someone's pushing me. I might challenge them. They might not expect that. You know, if they're getting you one shot and you just jump around the corner and just hit them with a quick scope, they don't know what's happening because jump shots and quick scopes like that are always going to go straight. You've got to know every type of shot type for the quick panic shots to the drag scope to the whipping your shot around the corner. Every gunfight is going to be different. So you need to make sure that you know every specific situation that's going to happen so you can adjust you can react quickly and uh, come out on top that's the main goal i can't say this is going to work every single time because it's not you know health regen on this game seems really slow it's going to be hard for you to be aggressive all the time but then again if you're not getting hit a lot you know you can be aggressive you can be push it you can push them back into their spawn hold their spawns spawns on this game seem pretty solid in like kill confirmed and tdm they don't really switch too much unless you're diving in there i think sometimes you even spawn with them because one guy doesn't seem to push those spawns out they don't really flip that much but in domination hardpoint it's going to be 
be a little bit different. You're going to die in the back a lot. It's just those objective game types aren't what they used to be. So a tip that I gave back on Black Ops 3 was leading your shots. So basically, there was a lot of movement on this game, a lot of flying through the air, a lot of wall running. And you want to make sure that you were ahead of them. So as you're scoping in, they're running into your shot. So when you scope hits the screen, you can take the shot. So you don't have to follow them. It's very hard to follow on that game as well because of lack of drag scoping with the no aim assist sniping. So I thought on this game, it's actually kind of working in the same way. Whether they're coming around cover or they're coming onto a head glitch or whatever it may be, you want to be ahead of the game. You want to be leading your shot. So as you're scoping in, you're not scoping in and then they're ahead of you. You want to be scoping in. So as the scope hits the screen, you can shoot straight away rather than you scope in, try and chase them, try and follow them because that's very hard without aim assist. It's very hard when drag scoping is not the best thing to do on this game. So don't always sprint around corners. It's going to be so hard for you to react and adjust if you're sprinting around a corner because you got to bring your scope up and get that shot off. So sprinted, slow it down. Don't always sprint around the map. When I know I'm against better players and I know they're going to kill me if I come around the corner sprinting, I'm going to slow it down. I'm going to make sure if I do go around a corner, I might even peek. I might even peek first and then come around. There's got to be little things like that where you've got to be aware that someone could be just aimed up. They could be aimed up ready and you're just going to die. Peek corners first if you know there's going to be a lot of people there or pre-aim around the corner. There's just going to be those little things that you can do instead of just sprinting around a corner like a madman. Just, just figure out what's going on. But just be aware that sniping isn't meant to be these close combat you know type of gameplay that you want it's there to be a struggle it's there to be hard to challenge someone up close so make sure you're in a better situation against a pre-aimer against someone who knows you're coming make sure you outsmart them before they just use the general mechanics in the game to kill you a lot of people always ask me on this game or in previous games how do you know where the enemy is going to come from how do you know that they're spawning there how do you know they're going to come from that area and that is just down to playing the game a lot i know this game's not been out that long but the spawns usually work the same on every card that you play i play a lot of tdm i play a lot of kill confirmed on this game and that kind of game type is based on what your team are doing if your team is pushing a certain spawn and they're still staying there and your teammates are still spawning behind you nine times out of ten they're always going to be in front of you if you then see one teammate push in a little bit too far and then he spawns maybe mid map or he spawns next year they spawn behind you you've just got to be aware of the mini map you've got to be aware of your teammates because it's all based on what your team are doing unless you're playing free for all which is based on your location and where you're stood and where the other enemies are stood it's always about what your team are doing and that's why certain things like domination or hard point where you're holding a certain spawn and you're making sure your team spawn on you that is something you're going to learn over time there's no theater mode in this game so you can't like go into theater and figure out where they're spawning but just be aware look at the mini map look at where you're stood look at where your teammates are stood to figure out where the enemies are going to come from where the enemies are going to spawn and the basically the general locations of where enemies run to anyway the choke points the common areas the common streaks the common corners the common alleyways you're going to learn that over time you're going to learn that when you play in don't just run around like a headless chicken not looking at anything be aware of where your team are where you are when the enemies are spawning so now we got the main tips the main techniques while in game out of the way i want to talk about the setup that i have the class setup that i use and what i recommend if you're going for clips if you're going for gameplays whatever it may be i always recommend rapid fire i think it's just key to know that you have a faster sniper than someone who's not rocking it i also would recommend to use extender mags on something like the springfield or the con 98k on those snipers you're only getting five bullets without extender mags especially if you're going for clips i would recommend using extender mags it's going to help so much the lee enfield however rapid fire yes extender mags no you don't need it you already have 10 bullets there's no need for like 14 or whatever it gives you the carabin who cares about the carabin so now you're probably thinking what about ballistic calibration i want my sway speed to be reduced if you didn't know what the attachment did that's what it does using that while using the the mountain division where you can hold your breath and reduce all the sway i think it's a waste of an attachment i think for the other divisions where you can't hold your breath if you want to throw on prime and use ballistic calibration i am all for that i think that's a very helpful thing to do but if you're using primed use it on every other class apart from mountain and make sure you throw on ballistic calibration if you're doing that to make sure you're making the most of your attachments because otherwise rapid fire extender mags they're great it's perfect that's all you need if you're going to be using the mountain if you're using the four times scope make sure you use that ballistic calibration pair those two together it's going to be super helpful i don't really use fmj too much i think it's good maybe in hardcore but for regular gameplay there's not many times you're going to shoot through a wall i don't think it's too helpful it doesn't affect the overall damage of the gun it's not too helpful i forgot what the other attachments are but those are the those are the go-to ones okay so i would definitely say there's around three basic trainings that are going to be helpful for your sniping and your gameplay on different maps i don't think there's any more than that that are going to help right now but if there's something you love it could be some random one that doesn't help with sniping at all but if you like that one and you play with that one whatever it may be and you like that stick with that but i want to talk about these three that i think really help with sniping and really help with me in terms of my gameplay on different maps and different situations scoped basically 
basically says if you're aiming down sights, it reduces idle sway. And I really don't think it works on the snipers right now. I've tested it out and it really doesn't work. Because I was thinking, what if ballistic calibration, which reduces the sway, and you use scopes, which apparently reduces the sway, teams together? Are, are you even moving? Is it, is it just straight? But unfortunately, scope isn't working at all right now. I don't know if they made it like that. But right now on the snipers, as I'm making this video, it doesn't help. Obviously, I mentioned primed already, which is basically giving you an extra attachment on your gun and reduces the flinch. I'll show you a couple of examples. Once again, the flinch reduction is pretty noticeable and I think it's definitely helpful if you're using a regular weapon. But in terms of sniping, I think the flinch is going to be flinching anyway. It's going up anyway. You've just got to adjust in-game to the amount of flinch. I don't think having reduced flinch is going to help too much unless you want to use it for the extra attachment, which is going to be really helpful if you're using something other than the mounted division. So Lookout is a very, very powerful one in terms of sniping, especially on the bigger maps. In terms of just the radar itself, it changes something to do with the size of the map. So it shrinks the graphic size, I think, but it allows for more awareness. You can see more of the map, if that makes any sense. So that's really helpful as well. But the main reason people use this basic training is to see people's names and player names from all across the map. This is so helpful on a map like Gustav Cannon or Aachen or something that's a big map with long lines of sights. You might be hard to see someone who's just head glitching over something or just peeking around the corner. This basically glows their name above them like you've got your crosshairs on them so you know where they are. And it's so helpful on bigger maps, even on smaller maps. It comes in a little bit handy. Hustle allows you to reload faster which is super i just i just love it it's so helpful when i don't use it i feel lost i really really love it and it also helps to reload while you're sprinting so if i'm pushing a spawn if i'm trying to get back into the gameplay as fast as i can and i can reload while i'm sprinting it just saves so much time it doesn't really affect the sniping itself but i think it affects the play style enough and the gameplay enough that it really does help sniping probably something else out there that might help you a little bit but those are the three i think the best basic trainers for you to use on your snipers so when creating a class i think you should start off with the division you should focus on that first you figure out what you want from that division and then you go into the basic training you want to figure out what basic training is going to help your division and then also help the final part is figuring out the sniping setup so that is the way i would do it because the division itself is going to be so crucial to what your playstyle is going to be like if you don't like hard scoping if you don't want to hold your breath don't use the mounted division if you're a fast place player and you want to be running around quickly then use the airborne and you might even want to pair the airborne with hustle where you have a fast reload and you reload while sprinting so you can run across the map as fast as you can every setup is going to be different expeditionary has like tack resist or something like that but it also allows you to throw is that a stun and a grenade something like that so if you don't like being stunned a lot or you don't like being flashed or whatever use expeditionary this like armored as well which is like flak jacket you're going to take a lot more grenades but you might have two grenades i might have mixed those up but each division is going to base around your play style it's going to be based around your map mounted division might be really helpful on gustav cannon where you have to hold your breath a lot and line up some shots but you might not want to use mounted division on flak tower and there's no point to hold your breath you might as well use something like armored where you're going to get hit with a lot of nades or you might want to use infantry so you can use a four time scope and ballistic calibration so you can run around in close quarter combats and use a four time scope rather than a regular scope because you need extended mags and rapid fire as well as you know what i mean like it is so based on the map it is so based on the game type it's so based on what sniper you want to use you're never going to use that specific setup on every map and if you do i don't really think it's going to help that much you're going to tailor your gameplay based on the map you're going to play on the division you're going to use on the sniper you're going to use different lobbies different situations different gunfights it's always going to be different so make sure the lobby you're in you're tailoring your playstyle you're tailoring your gameplay you're tailoring your class based on that experience the game a little bit more enjoy what it has to offer there's so many different things that work together on this game there's so many different things that are going to work in your favor compared to someone else who has a different playstyle to you just make sure you adjust to what you feel comfortable with and what works well on those specific maps and i know everybody hates to hear this but i've got to say it anyway these tips are just here for you to learn more about the game learn more about sniping but if you're not practicing a lot and you're not playing a lot it might not help too much so make sure you put the time in you practice a lot practice is key i know everybody hates that phrase whatever you do in life the more you do it the better you're probably going to get over time so yes these tips are going to help you a lot to figure out certain play styles what's good for you what's bad for you what shot types you love but make sure you practice make sure you put a lot of time into the game and that is the best way you're going to improve as a player and as a sniper i'm not saying i'm the greatest of all time or anything like that but i know how to snipe i know how to adjust to certain games certain play styles certain maps and i hope i've done enough to convey all of that in this video if just one of you right now watching this video takes everything i've said into consideration and goes into the game 
game, has a better time, enjoys himself more, and gets better at sniping, I have succeeded. So, with that being said, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you haven't already, please drop a like as well. Drop a comment as well if I did miss something, but hopefully I've covered every single thing I needed to in this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you all enjoy some World War II sniping, because it's damn fun, I'll tell you that.